Good morning. We here at Greenwood Missionary Baptist Church in Kansas City, Missouri, are honored that you are there to join us this morning for our worship services. God has truly blessed each and every one of us uh, in allowing us to see one more day. Our announcements for this morning, uh, we will continue with no in-person services uh, to further notice. Please be vigilant in your praying as well as your studying of the Word of God as we move forward. The Davis Brown and Brown family would like to thank our Greenwood family for your thoughts and prayers. Uh, and special thank you to the Hershey's Mission, Brown and Sister uh, Williams, Sister and Brother Thomas, Robert Williams, and Deacon and Sister York, as well as Sister Cameron Woodard for all of your acts of love during our time of sorrow. Uh, we appreciate you all more than you know. Also, let us remain prayerful for those in our Greenwood Church family, our, our sick and shedding list, as well as special prayers for Sister uh, Robin Rogers as she continues her recuperation, uh, as well as uh, the Aikens family. We want to continue to be in prayer for them. Uh, this morning's message will uh, focus on, again, gaining access to the assurances of God. Uh, this week, uh, we've got an advocate that we can count on who will provide the assistance that we stand in need of to help us through uh, our trials and tribulations. Uh, so if you don't mind, turn to 1 John chapter 2, 1 through 6. Uh, that will be our focal scripture and text for this morning. Uh, and now we'll have a selection by our very own Sister Kenny Woodard, uh, after which I'll come back and share with you what God has placed on my heart for today. Amen. <laughs>
do not pass me by. Oh, that's a cry to the Lord that you want to continue to be in his presence and want him to continue to work on your behalf. We're grateful and thankful today for God and his continued love for us. Uh -huh. uh, we thank Sister Cannon for the selection on this morning. Uh, and we pray that the Lord is opening doors for you that no man can close. Yes, yes, First John chapter 2, starting at verse 1 through 6. We give our praises to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who is first and foremost in our life, to the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, whom he has left as a comforter, yeah. to our deacons, to our very beautiful First Lady, Sister Carol, to our mothers, to our deaconesses, to our musicians, Sister Cammie, Brother Malachi, to uh, our urchins and our choir, uh, to you, our brothers and sisters in Christ, members, visitors, and friends. Uh, it is a pleasure for us to be here on today. I, I don't know about you, but I, I don't think I'd want to be anywhere else but in the house of the Lord. So we are grateful to God uh, for his continued care and for the way that he continues to love us uh, in spite of sometimes our own uh, uh -huh. wrongdoings, our own thoughts towards things. Uh, but God is faithful and we thank him for that. Uh, again, 1 John chapter 2, verses 1 through 6. Uh, and it reads thusly, My little children, these things I write unto you, that ye sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. And he is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Uh -huh. And hereby we do know that we know him if we keep his commandments. He that said, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But whoso keepeth his word, in him verily is the love of God perfected. Hereby know we that we are in him. He that said he abided in him all himself also to walk, even as he walked. Uh -huh. Let us pray. Eternal Master, the mighty name of Jesus, we come. Lord, we are grateful, O oh Lord, for the opportunity to be here one more time. Lord, we ask now, Father, for forgiveness for the things that we did. This week, Father, that may have been uh, out of order, unpleasing to you, rebellious. And, and ask now, Father, that you forgive us, Lord, of all of our sins. Master, we ask now and thank you, Father, for your great love that you showed all this week. For, Lord, uh, the sun continued to rise, the moon kept going down. Lord, you fed us, Lord, and you provided, Lord, in the midst of all that we were going through. And so, Lord, for that, we just say thank you. We ask now in the name of Jesus, Lord, that as we prepare, Lord, to hear your word, that you will search each and every one of our hearts. And Lord, if there's anything in us that's not like you, Father, that you would cast it out right now. So that, Lord, that we may be found, Father, blameless, and that your word will fall upon good ground. I ask now, Father, that you remove me as the pastor, as the preacher, out of the way. That, Lord, that not my words, but your words may go forth. That, Lord, that when I speak, Father, I speak as a result of what you've spoken to me. And that, Lord, that I will share, Lord, as you have given, Father, uncompromised, Lord, that, Lord, that your children may hear a word from you that will be life-changing, Father, and uplifting. We yes, pray now, Father, for our sick and shedding. Continue, Lord, to guide them, Lord. Watch over Sister Rogers, Master, as she can recuperate. Yes, and then, Lord, we're praying now, Father, for all that are at home, Master, and uh, still trying to figure this whole thing out, Father. For, Lord, we know it's not up to us to figure it out. For you said, trust in the Lord with all thy heart. Lean not into our own understanding. In all thy ways, we'll acknowledge you, Lord, and you will direct our path. So, Lord, we ask for direction. We ask for guidance. And, Lord, we won't be sure to give you the praise. So, in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and we pray and give you thanks. Let every heart say amen, 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 amen. and amen. amen. Again, our focal scriptures this morning is 1 John chapter 2 verses 1 through 6, and we'd like to use for a topic this morning, Accessing the Assurances of God, Part 3. Amen? Amen. Accessing the Assurances of God, Part 3. Uh, this morning, I woke up and the sun was shining. Uh, the birds were still singing, and there was continued movement of his people and the things as I ventured into this day. 
Sister Carolina, it, it reminded me that no matter what I go through or what we've experienced yesterday, the Lord's grace and mercy followed me into today, and I'm glad about it. Are you glad about it? Amen. And can I hear anybody say amen? amen? Every day we walk the face of the earth. It's another day to offer praise to God. The psalmist says that I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. Hallelujah. This praise is unconditional and not predicated upon what uh, has been done to us or what we have even done. Uh, it's just a heartfelt expression uh, of our gratitude towards God for his intentional care for us and all who walk the face of the earth. Uh -huh. As you listen this morning, I, I want you to take a moment to uh, reflect on just how many things God has done for you and what he's brought you through and continues to do. Uh, some writer said he searched all over and couldn't find nobody. Nobody greater than him. Uh, and so, Lord, we thank you on today. We shout out hallelujah. Our lives and walk with the Lord are ever evolving. And as we grow in our relationship with him or as we live lives that are supposed to draw others to Jesus Christ, the attacks, the temptations, uh, and the trials that we face are going to be ongoing. Yeah, uh -huh, yeah. Sin is all around us. And occasionally, as believers, we may still miss the mark. John reminds us last week that if we say that we have no sin, then, then we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. However, we should not allow these moments of uh, 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 these laps in good judgment or these deliberate acts of rebellion to paralyze us and, and prevent us from seeking God truly repenting and desiring reconciliation from him. As we concluded last week, we can, we can trust God to move forward. We can trust God to move on our behalf when we learn how to confess our sins. Uh, there were three things about God that makes uh, making the right choices beneficial to us going forward. We found out last week that he is faithful. Yeah. That means God can be trusted. <laughs> Woo! Yeah, we can count on him to do just what God said he's going to do. God is just. That means that he's, a, uh, he's fair and impartial. Uh, he dislikes any ill treatment of his people yeah. or oppressed people or even in nature, yeah. which he's created. And it speaks again to the sovereign rule in which God can do what he wants to because he just is. Yeah, yeah, right. Because of our obedience and confessing our sins, verse 9 assured us that, that God can begin the process of making us whole again. Uh -huh. Because he is faithful and he is just and it results into him now cleansing us thoroughly to remove sin's effect. Uh -huh. God knows that sin causes brokenness. Yeah. Uh, and when we confess sin, we acknowledge to him, God, I'm broken. And I need some fixing. Yeah. God takes these confessions and then what he does is he goes ahead uh, with the diagnosis and he makes the necessary repair. Uh -huh. Today as we continue our path of assessing or accessing the assurance of God, John continues to enlighten those whom he wrote to and us as the recipients of God's inspired work of the meticulous steps. That word meticulous means God took his time. Uh, he, he, he took small steps and he paid attention to every step that he took to make sure that, that when he was giving us the best opportunity for reconciliation, he provided us with his very own son in the person of Jesus the Christ. You know, I was, I was watching an inspirational video in which one of the speakers taught this class and, uh, uh, and it was there to help others improve. And he shared that at the beginning of the semester, what he would do is, he would give the questions to the final exam to the students on the very first day. Yeah. Uh, and then over the course of the uh, uh, semester, he would teach those questions in those classes. Uh -huh. uh, so the, the concept was that if you were in class, yeah. if you were there every day, if you paid attention, if you did the work, then at the end of the uh, uh, semester, his goal, he said, was for every individual yeah. to have yeah. an A. Now, he mentioned, amen, that he also received a little backlash from the administrators, uh, but he pointed to them that what was the real reason for the students coming? Was it there for them to pay a bunch of money, or was it for them to come through these courses successfully in the end so that they could go out and make a change into the world? Hallelujah. God has given us the answers to our final exam, and, and he desires for us to be successful in him and to grow. However, we must trust the process. Tell your neighbor, trust the process. Go ahead, tell your neighbor again, trust the, uh, the process. The Philadelphia 76ers said that, that, that with, with Embiid, you got
gotta trust the process, amen, and, and do the work. Tell your baby, you gotta do the work. See, 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 too many of us want everything to happen, but we don't want to do no work for it, amen, amen, amen. So in the text, John lays out God's directions to assist us in accessing the assurances of a qualified advocate. Man, you can have somebody advocating for you, but that don't necessarily mean that they always qualify. Everybody that enters into court ain't always qualified to defend the person that they defended. And so we want them to have access to a qualified advocate. Because the issues that we are dealing with are too critical for us to just leave them in the hands of some mere amateur. In doing so, John expresses first and foremost that the overall objective is to keep us from sin and the impact that it has on a person. He says in verse 1, my little children, these things I write unto you that ye what? Sin not. Just between the span of Friday morning and now, there were countless uh, stories uh, presented on channels 4, 5, 9, 41, CNN, and uh, other news outlets that all were the results of sin that's going on around us. Sin is defined in the Oscar Dictionary as an immoral act considered to be a transgression against a divine, uh, divine law. Uh, biblically, 1 John 3, 4 says that whosoever committed sin transgresses against the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. Right. A person transgresses when they infringe or go beyond the bounds of some established order. God established the law to keep us within the bounds of the desires that he has for us. It was the establishment of order. Before the law, there was this reckless attitude that people moved on the behalf and they did whatever they wanted to and it displeased God. So God said, I had to put in order the things that you all were doing so you know what my expectation of you is and as a result of it, when you don't do it, then it's already written, it's in place. So when you break it or you go against it, now you can't come back and say, I didn't know what I was supposed to be doing. That's why we have God. Where there are no rules, there is no order. Where there is no order, there is chaos. Where there is chaos, there is failure. And where there is failure, there is death. Tell your neighbor, God is bringing this for us to lead me now. James 1, 14, 15 says that every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and entice. So in other words, I can't blame nobody when I go through and I do stuff that I'm doing. It's the lust that I have that I'm enticed by the desire to do that thing. Amen. He said, but then when lust has conceived, that means when it has uh, uh, been birthed, amen, it brings forth sin. So sin is birthed after lust. And when it is finished, it brings forth death. So there's a lot of stuff I ain't supposed to be having, so I need to stop lusting about it. Tell your baby, say, baby, stop lusting on stuff that you ain't supposed to be having. Because what happened is that now you get the thought in your mind, and now it is conceived. And then when it's conceived, you might just necessarily try something to get that very thing that you lusting for. Then when you lust for it and you go for it, amen, then you come back talking about, oh, I shouldn't have done that. Oh, I shouldn't have done that. I should have ate that piece of cake. I should have messed with such and such and such. I shouldn't have done that thing. And what we are understanding is that when I do those things, it brings forth death. We must strive to avoid sin in our lives. You got to strive. You got you to make it a priority. I don't want to sin no more. Amen. Amen. You got to tell us that I don't want to drink no more. I don't want to be lying no more. I don't want to be messing around no more. I don't want to be doing none of those things that brought me down and got me in a position where now I have to, amen, praise God all the time. I, I love praising him, amen. We got to praise him. Why? Because of the fact that sin destroys us. Yes, sir. But God in his infinite love and wisdom keeps us going. God's illustration of sin is demonstrated by John also in Revelation using the actions of seven churches. Each of the churches described by John illustrates symbolically one of seven sins or human devices that, uh, that, that, that can corrupt the soul and cause unhappiness in the world. And, and he had anger, which was at the church of Ephesus. It was gluttony that was a drink at the church of Smyrna. It was pride at the church of Pergamos. It was lust at the Thyteria. It was slothfulness at Sardis. It was envy at Philadelphia. And the Laodiceans were uh, guilty of greed. In each case, John gives the name of a known church in this day as a figurative illustration or expression and offers the corresponding vice followed by an expression of the virtue needed to overcome them. Yeah. 
Hallelujah. He said, I, I know you're sinning. Amen. He said, but you ain't got to keep doing that. If you want God to continue to operate in your life, then you got to find the answer to your sin. And the answer is Jesus. Yes, when we sin, it is a violation of God's law. And it is an attack on God's order. Yes. God's love for mankind is so great that he was willing to sacrifice his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, to pay the ransom that was due as a result of our sins, amen? And what it did is it rendered us acquitted of the charges that were against us because Jesus paid the price. Ain't that something, amen? They, they say, they, I've been acquitted, amen? Now, they don't, they don't mean that you can, after your acquittal, you go back to doing that same stuff, yeah. a amen? Because then you got to go through the trial again, amen? A amen. John confirms these by expressing now that sin, even in the life of the believer, is possible. Therefore, we get to point number two, which he reads in the, uh, the first part of our 1B, in which he says, now, uh, if any man sin, we have an advocate, uh -huh. say advocate, yeah. with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous, which means our point is don't lose faith if you fail. All right, Because we have a designated help. Hallelujah, tell you, man, I got a designated help. Amen. <laughs> Romans 6.23 says, for the wage of sin is death, and the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. When we sin, the payment for what we are doing should be death. Yes, sir. So, so, so when I do something I ain't supposed to be doing, I should die. Amen. And we understand that Adam and Eve's sin of disobedience had consequences that still affect us today. However, because of Jesus, who is our designated help, John says, and if any man sin, we have an advocate. An advocate is one who intercedes for us with the Father. In other words, Jesus knew what it was like to be here. So what happened was he comes here, he lives on earth, he know they talk about him, they know he lied on him, they killed him, or they tried to kill him, they destroyed him, they tried to destroy him, they tried to take him out, and Jesus gave up the door. But now what happened, he's sitting on the right hand of the Father in heaven, and now he's interceding on our behalf. He is an advocate. He's an advocate because he knows what we have done, what we've been through. The best advocate that you can ever have is somebody who has been in your shoes, and now they can stand and defend you. Psalms 119, one says, Blessed are the undefiled the way who walk in the law of the Lord. Amen. The message version of that says that you're blessed when you stay on course. Yeah. Walking steadily on the road is revealed by God. We got to stay on the road revealed by God so that we can get the advocacy that Jesus provides for us. Jesus' advocacy is effective because of his character, which is presented by John as righteous. Yes, yes. Turns your neighbor, neighbor yes. righteous. The Amplified Bible points to this righteous status as being upright, uh -huh. just, and as who confirmed a one who conformed to the Father's will in every purpose, thought, and action. In other words, it ain't about me. So, so what happens is that when I'm serving God, Jesus understood his role. And so what happened is that Jesus, as a, as a servant and, and also as the advocate, he, he understood his role, but he also stayed in his lane. Ask him, ask him, you stay in your lane. <laughs> Everything he did was in alignment with what the Father wanted to be done. It was in him to walk in this matter. So Jesus had no choice because that's who he was. Now, Dr. Dolman shared with us this week in our course that, that, that in being righteous, being must first occupy your heart and body before doing it. In other words, he said, you can't uh, uh, do right if you ain't right. That's right. Hallelujah. Right. Amen. You can never truly do right until right is who you be. Now, I know that's not a, a grammatically true uh, 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 in line with what people would say, but I, you all know what I'm saying. In other words, I cannot operate in righteousness if righteousness ain't a part of who I am. Amen. It don't matter how many shoes I put on. It don't matter how many dresses I put on. It don't matter how many hats I wear. It don't matter how many high heel shoes or gator shoes I wear. It does not matter if I am not right on the inside. It ain't going to show up on the outside. Because of Jesus is alive with God, it was not an issue for him to be the propitiation. That word propitiation means atoning sacrifice. In other words, he was the one who made the atonement with God so that we would have the opportunity to eternal life. Once uh, we understand that, that the Bible is declaring that without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sin. So blood had to be shed. Old Testament, they would take animals and they would sacrifice them yearly and they would take them to the priest and he would make that atonement with them. Jesus Christ comes and now he is the good shepherd. Not only is he the good shepherd, but he's 
the Lamb of God, and not only is he the Lamb of God, but he's the perfect Lamb. He goes to the cross, he dies on our behalf, and as a result of that, we don't have to have anybody die anymore. He died one time. And I don't need him to have to die again. Amen. Just speaking this and riding on the coattails of others and thinking we are such the benefits of being in right status with God is not enough. Yes, there has to be a demonstration of our connectedness to verify that we are getting and working with the appropriate entity. Uh -huh. Now, before COVID, remember uh, when, when the firm of the cable company would come uh, uh, and set up uh, in-person appointments and you have to wait for them all day and then they give you these windows where you have to wait in between the window. And, and if you like me, they usually show up on the tail end of the window. Uh, so I got an 8 to 12, and they don't get to until 11.59. So, so I got to deal with that whole day. But, but when they would come, they would use their device. So they make all the connections. They wire the house. And then when they get to the point where they're now getting ready to connect everything, so they would use this device where they would connect their device. Their device had a connection that allowed them to get a connection from the company, but then also it would allow to see if the connection was going through to the house. Amen. Hallelujah. You're going to get this in a minute. Amen. And, and, and what happens is that they wouldn't leave until they were sure that both sides were working in concert. Hallelujah. John concludes today's text with the confirmation or indicator factor needed to show that we are on page with God through Jesus Christ. See, I got, see Jesus Christ is that connecting box. Amen. And, and we are on one side and God is the source. So what happens is that Jesus makes sure that we connect it to the source and he, and he ain't going to go nowhere if he already done what he needs to be do, done. Amen. So that he knew that we were connected. Now here's the thing about it. Just like with those cable companies, if something go wrong, they come back. Yeah. Bible declares that Jesus is going to come back again. And when he come back, he's coming back for a church without a spot of wrinkle. Amen. So, so as we look at Jesus being this indicator factor and, and, and his atonement sacrifice, the last point is that our choices identify our walk. Yeah. Tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, how you walking? <laughs> Who asked him again? Say, how you walking? Okay. Years ago, right down the street, over here, amen, just a little bit past where Sister Cammy said, and, and down the street, uh, there used to be a basketball court that the kids played in Park Gate. My uncle used to live over there, so we was over there quite a bit. And we would go over there, and we would shoot around, and basically, uh, you would show off a show that you could play, amen? Now, now then, uh, we would shoot to see who would be the captain. So, so you get in line, and everybody would shoot to see who was going to be the captain. Uh, and the key was the first two people to make it, they become the captains, amen? Uh, a short while went to get picked, in the midst of all of this was to make sure you made the shots. Yeah, yeah. So, so if I was one or two that made I know I'm gonna play, amen? Yeah. Now when we look at that, amen, uh, uh, after that, uh, you were at the mercy of the ones choosing. So if you didn't make the two shot, then you have to wait, amen? And it's all right if it was 10 people out there, that because everybody gonna get picked. Yeah, yeah. But if you got 11, 12, 13, that means somebody gonna have to sit on the side, amen? And usually you have one person who realized that they wasn't gonna get picked at all, so they just say, next game, amen? <laughs> amen, I'm just trying to show you that in this life, they gonna be no next game, amen? amen? And there were times that you would choose people that you was cool with, so some people you went over there with, so if you made it, you knew you was gonna pick them. Other times there were people that you thought were good because of their physical attributes, they was tall, you thought they could run and jump, a uh, block or what have you, so you say, I'm gonna go ahead and pick them, and then other times you would pick these uh, random blind uh, individuals, and, and not blind, but blind to pick them, and you trusted, amen, that it all worked out, that you would win, and then at the end, you played again, amen? amen. Now, 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 uh, uh, what and how we chose could bring about a variety of outcomes, some good yeah, yeah. and some bad. Proverbs 16, 9 says that a man's heart divides his way, but the Lord directs his step. So what happens is that we have to look at that thing from the same perspective, is that if I trust God enough, he's going to pick me. Yeah, and if he pick me, I know I'm going to play. And if I play, i got to play right. Yeah, yeah. Because if I don't play right, we lose. And if we lose, amen, it might not be another game. Yeah. Ooh, hallelujah, amen. Yeah, right. John concludes with the truth about making the right choice that sets us up for spiritual success and long-term favor. Verse 3, he says this. He says, and hereby we know that we know him if we do what? Keep his commandments. Right. He that said, I know him, and keep not his commandments is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But whoso keepeth his word in him, verily is the love of God perfected. Hereby know we that we are him, in, in him. He that said he abided in him of himself also so to walk, even as he walked. Amen. Right. So verse 3 points to a way of discerning or showing that we are coming to know him. This word know denotes an intimacy. All right, I love it. Ooh, gosh. 
it's more than just a physical attraction. Amen. Uh -huh. Here John is talking about getting acquainted to the point of perceiving or understanding uh, the Lord's will and his principles, forsaking, you know, how, how we think or feel about a matter, yet embracing the Lord's will in all that concerns him. Amen. We demonstrate this intimacy by keeping or observing his teachings or his commandments and his precepts. In other words, amen, if you're going to get intimate, that means you're going to spend some time with, and you get to know a person based, not based upon what you see, but you get it based upon what you talk about, what you experience, spending time. You know something about it. They know something about you. If you can't find their phone number a week later, that ain't intimacy. Hallelujah. I'm just trying to keep people from crying. Amen. Those who don't demonstrate these things is identified as what? A liar. And the truth is not in him. So if I don't follow God's concept, uh, his precepts, and his commandments, then I'm lying. I can be in church doing what I'm doing in church, but if I'm not following at home, and when I'm not at church and around other Christians and believers, then it is as if I'm not doing it, then I'm a liar. Yeah, right. yeah. What truth is John referring to? John is referring to the truth of the gospel, that being the good news of Jesus Christ. What then is that good news? Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Over 2,000 years ago, Jesus the Christ, uh, the only begotten Son, uh, would come. He made himself, the Bible declares, of no reputation. Uh, he wrapped himself in the flesh of man, and uh, he would face uh, life just like you and I. Amen. Uh, there was nothing that Jesus went through that we don't go through ourselves. Amen. He dealt with criticism. He dealt with some hardships. He dealt with being misunderstood. He was doubted as the Messiah. Amen. And you know people misuse you. Sometimes they, they, they criticize you, and they doubt that you're going to be who God said you're going to be. Amen. Yet he was no mere man. He accepted his calling and thought uh, and taught those uh, uh, who were open to hearing his message. Amen. He poised and continued the spreading of the gospel. He said, I'm going to declare that there's a group of men that my father has told me to collect. I will collect those men. Now, when you see these men, they ain't going to be like the men you thought they should have been. Amen. They ain't going to be up in the temple hanging out. Amen. They're going to be both. They're going to be off the street. And they're going to be both with some issues and some problems so that when you see them coming and you see the message that they demonstrate, it would be a demonstration of what God can do in the life of somebody who is not like what you think they're supposed to look like. Well, I declare that Jesus will be celebrated in and into Jerusalem. Amen. They'll hop that Hosanna. Hosanna. Amen. And then in the short span of a couple of days, he was accused. He was tried. He was convicted. And then he endured the cries of the people saying, crucify him. All right. Carried his own cross. Lifted up on the cross for all to see the Bible declared. He said in word of I, if I be lifted up, yeah, yeah. I will draw all being unto me. He called upon the Father and said, Father, why is thou forsaken me? Yeah, yeah. And not only in that moment he understood, amen, that it was not that God had left him, but for the first time there was going to be a temporary separation between God and the Son. Yeah, yeah. Amen. In which God or Jesus had to perform a duty, and that duty would require him to leave God for a brief moment. Yeah. But then the Bible declares that he comes back and says, Father, forgive them. For they know not what they do. Uh, Aspirating or uh, sharing with us, amen, the, uh, the understanding that the people were there carrying out what the prophecy had said. The people were carrying out what the word had told was going to happen. And now it will be a manifestation for that on the cross. The Bible declares that Jesus gave up the ghost. The Bible says that he dropped his head off the ghost and his shoulders. He gives up the ghost. They take my Lord and Savior off of the cross. The Bible declares that they bury him in a borrowed tomb. He stayed there all day Friday. Yeah. Stayed there all day Saturday. But the Bible declares that early Sunday morning. Now, ain't that amazing? Early Sunday morning, we can't get up on early in most mornings. Amen. But early Sunday morning, and the Bible also declares that they come looking for Jesus. Even after Jesus had told them that he was not going to be there. Matter of fact, Mary runs back to the disciples and says, He ain't there. The Bible declares that Jesus shows up and he speaks to the disciples. He stays around for another 50 days or so. And then he tells them that now I've got to leave. Yeah. They come ask the Lord, you got a sign for us when we leave. He said, don't worry about no sign. He said, I got to ascend, amen, into heaven. He said, but when I ascend into heaven, you shall be witnesses. Yeah. Meaning that we've got to walk the walk. we got to talk the talk. we got to be what God has declared in the yeah. decree for us to be. God declares, amen. That then my Lord and Savior, as an advocate, amen, he, he's there, and now he's a sinner, and he's sitting on the right hand of the Father. So when we go through, he can say, Daddy, I know what it was like. Yeah. Oh, Daddy, I didn't see how them folks can act there on earth. But I, Daddy, I know what they call folks, amen. And, 
and you know I was just sanitizing but they call me those things. You know what they're going to say about that. Yeah, yeah. Bible declares that when the day comes, he's going to come back for it. Yeah. When it comes back, amen, he's going to come back for the church, amen. And there ain't going to be a building. There ain't going to be a building. It's going to be you. It's going to be you who have declared the creed that God is the source of my life. Yeah. That God is the head of my life. That God is everything to me, amen. God is yeah. my everything. Yes, he is, amen. Oh, oh Sister Carol, one day. Uh, he's going to return and the things of the day will be things of the past. And, and we will call, and he'll call us, and we will experience the joy of being in the presence of God. There ain't going to be no more sickness. Yeah, yeah. Won't be no more funerals for little babies. Yeah, yeah. Won't be no more that man killing and dying, backbiting, and political posture. And his justice will rule and his power will be on display. We'll get to sing them songs, Cameron. Yeah, yeah. uh, I, 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 I imagine that by that time I have a voice just like him. I, I sing five songs, amen. Yeah, yeah. Amen. Angelic, amen. No more worried about all the what people are listening to and hear. Amen. But just focus on the fact that God says, sing to me. And every one of us will have our own song. What is to come is far better than what is. Tell you, man, say, neighbor, what coming? It, 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 won't, it, it don't compare to what we have right now. She said, God got some stuff for us. Amen. Amen. You had some rough days. You had some bad days. Amen. But the songwriter said, I, I had some good days.
on today. We extend the invitation. Uh, there may be someone out there, if you uh, can get to your local church, amen, or if you know that you are in need of someone that you just want to talk to, you can call us here at the church, 816-471-7348. Uh, we'll be glad to talk with you, amen, share Jesus with you. Uh, but more importantly, know, Father, that you know that you can call upon the name of the Lord, and God can hear you. He will respond to our cries. He will respond to us. Uh, more importantly, you can make sure that you get your life in order. Amen. You can't do it by yourself. So I decree and declare to you right now that trying to do it on your own will not work. But God is faithful. God is just. And he will cleanse us of all unrighteousness if we will confess our sins unto him. We are grateful for the opportunity to be here on today. We thank God for his word. We thank God for your presence. We ask that you, uh, the Lord, that he will give you a wonderful week. Uh, show you those things and provide a hedge of protection around you and your family. As we get ready to leave, let us be mindful again of Sister Rogers, who's uh, recuperating. Let us be mindful of all of our bereaved families, uh, our children. Uh, just be in prayer for all of them. Let us pray. <clears throat> Turn the master in the name of Jesus, we come. But we thank you for your grace and your mercy. We thank you, Father, for this day. Uh, though we won't put no thought for tomorrow, yesterday is gone. So, Lord, we thank you for the present. We thank you, Lord, that your word will go forth and will not come back more. That, Lord, it will go forth and accomplish that which you set for us to accomplish. Somebody, Lord, has hurt you. Somebody's life, Lord, will be changed. But we pray now that as the enemy also hurt you, that, Lord, you keep him at bay. You told us, Father, when we loose in heaven, you loose, uh, when we loose on earth, you loose in heaven. And when we bound on earth, you bound in heaven. And so, Lord, we are asking now, Father, that you bind the works of Satan. That, Lord, that he has no rest for you, Lord, on anyone whose ears were able to hear on today. Father, we're praying now, Father, for a movement, Father, like never before. Lord, we realize, Lord, with all the things going on, COVID, economics, and what have you, that, Lord, it, is, it appears, Father, that we are in a, a dire time. But, Lord, I thank you. Because, Lord, we realize that, Lord, our times are not dying if we got you. So I thank you for you continuing to show up, Father. And then, Lord, I just pray now that you would hoist your spirit, Lord, in the hearts of people. That they be mindful, Father, that we can live worry-free if we've got a relationship with you. Lord, I pray now, Father, for every member of Ringwood. I pray for every individual, Father, that is on this uh, broadcast, Father. I pray for all, Father, who will hear your word. Uh, Lord, let us be lights, Lord, in this world of darkness. That others will see Jesus Christ through us. That they will walk accordingly. Lord, we thank you for everything. Watch over our children. Yeah. Bless them, Father, as they are in the uh, verge, or on the verge, Father, of returning to school. Uh, even in the midst of uncertainty, Lord, I'm praying that, Lord, your word and your will will overcome, Father, the yes. sensibility of people. That, Lord, that we will do what's appropriate, Lord, that will protect them and keep them safe. And that, Lord, they will keep their minds, Father, stayed on you. Lord, I thank you, Lord, today. Bless you, Father, for all that you have and all you have been to us. We are glorified, or you are glorified. We shout out hallelujah and thank you. Now may the grace of God, the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit, Rest room to Bible with us henceforth now and forevermore. Let every heart say amen, amen, amen. God bless you all. Have a blessed and wonderful week.